to you all. Um, this is a swift run through um, a project that's in process at the moment that has been triggered by my 100 plus weeks of solitude for uh, one day. Um, one of my most enjoyable things at Whitefriars was speaking to people who would come up to the fence, look through, and say, Exactly what are you doing? And when I explained to them um, that I was excavating the site of Perth Carmelite Fire before its redevelopment, um, and then not speaking about the Reformation, I was surprised how many of them had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. So I thought it was time to address that. Um, now, whether we realise it or not, um, the friars are very much a part of popular culture. Whether it's Friar Tuck, uh, here in both his Robin Hood version uh, and his Disney version, um, a rather nice beer from the Inverarmon Brewery. Um, Sean Connery, uh, in the name of the Rose. Um, the orders that I'm interested in are mendicant orders. That means, as you can see from the text on the screen, um, they have vows of absolute poverty and, and dedication to an aesthetic way of life. They're relying on charity. These are the Franciscans, the Carmelites, the Blackfriars. Also, I've included the Trinitarians, who are known as Red Flyers. They're not mendicant, um, and they were very much um, looking after um, pilgrims um, and travellers. Um, rather like um, that example I've just given you of Friars being present in popular culture, they're still around us as well. If you go to, Blackfri uh, to Glasgow, you have Blackfriars Road, Aberdeen, Carmelite Street, and even now in Perth, I mean, Tullyland Farm no longer exists, but you have Tullyland Terrace. That is from the original name of the Carmelite Friar of Perth, which was known as Tullyland. Ah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, also, I'm always struck by the time that I go to my doctor's. Um, that they also read my original report on the Carmelite excavations published as a satirity of Antiquities monograph in the 80s because they've stolen the drawing um, of the roof finial from the Carmelite friary to use in their letterhead. Uh, thank you for that. Um, also, I'd like to point out that Friar in Perth has nothing to do with friars. Um, it originates um, from the Freer tomb built on the lands of St. Martin and Magdalene's Hospital. Now, in England in recent years, um, there's been quite a lot of synthesis done um, on various um, of the, um, the friaries um, and the friars themselves. Um, we have this very good um, book on the friars in medieval London. The one that I've decided I'm going to copy for Scotland is the one on the left which is Deirdre O'Sullivan's study of the archaeology of medieval friaries in England and Wales. I'm going to try and see if I can replicate that for the whole of Scotland. Um, we do have some Scottish publications, but they tend to be largely historical. Moyer Bryce's The Scottish Grey Friars, uh, Men's, The Black Friars of Perth, The Bible, Canon and Eason's Medieval Religious Houses of Scotland, um, and we have a few archaeological publications. We have Jedburgh Friary, um, originally dug as part of the Border Boroughs project by Piers Dixon. Um, we have the publication of my first work at Whitefriars in, in 1987. Uh, and more recently, we have the excavations at um, the Friary in Stirling, um, which has come out as an Arrow publication. Um, so, what we're looking at here um, are 48 friaries belonging to different orders um, across Scotland. And I've managed to get some money from the Society of Antiquaries Research Fund to help me uh, to initially visit 28 um, of these sites. And I have other grant bids out at the moment to try and deal with the remaining 20. Um, so, what are we looking at? Well, we have outstanding remains of some of the friaries in Scotland, Blackfriars at St Andrews in the grounds of Madras College, um, the Hospitium of the Grey Friars, the Franciscans in Inverkeithing. 
which is right next door to and um, part of uh, the project that North Lights Archaeology were doing uh, recently, um, of excavations there, which I'm sure we'll hear more about um, in the future. Um, a standing Carmelite church um, at South Queensbury, um, still in, in use uh, as a church these days. Um, one remaining fragment of the Blackfriars Monastery uh, in Inverness, which rather confusingly is in Greyfriars Cemetery. <laughs> Don't ask. Um, this is an early photograph um, of this dovecote in a field uh, just outside Dunbar, which is actually the original tower of the Redfriars Monastery, um, the Trinitarians. More of that in a minute. Um, in fact, more of that now. Um, archaeological excavations. We have Aberdeen Whitefriars um, back in the early 80s and the mid 90s, um, Ali Cameron, Judith Stones. We have our Dugut that I was just talking about, that Jonathan Wordsworth, um, myself, and Lindsay Ross did some trial trenching around um, prior to the building of houses and proved that that is actually the standing tower of the church. And you can probably just make out um, on that photograph, there we are. That's me standing at the west end of the church, and Lindsay Ross is standing at the east end. Um, and we found a tile floor um, for that church. Um, Guy Fries and Jane Dredd, um, I showed you the publication earlier, but that's the Board of Boroughs Excavation, virtually the entire Franciscan friary uh, in Jedburgh and Fort of Um Canal Street, 1984, David Dollar and myself running an MSC scheme um, uh, before the Shelton Housing went up, where we identified what we thought was a surviving fragment of the Blackfriars Church under what was then the club bar, which has now become King James, and more recently um, Gavin Lindsay and um, Urban. Um, the others and so the survey have done some more work and if you go into that pub you can now see um, that wall display under the floor. Um, and before Marshall College was refurbished in Aberdeen, Ali Cameron did some excavations there of the Grey Friars Monastery, uh, which included what I think is a foundation deposit for that flyery, which has this fantastic, complete three-legged Dutch cooking pot um, buried. Uh, in a pit inside one of the buildings. Um, and more recently, uh, 130 weeks of solitude by yours truly, um, and Blackfriars in Stirling, um, which I showed you um, as a publication. What sort of other resources have we got beyond understanding buildings and archaeology? We have occasionally some black and white photographs. This is a rather nice one um, of the hospitium in the Keeping when it still has other buildings standing around it in the mid-1930s. Um, we have the fantastic Hutton collection, um, this group of illustrations that cover an awful lot of things that were still standing um, in the late 18th century. That's part of the Trinitarian Friary uh, at Scotland Well, um, where there's actually a graveyard uh, in, in, now on the caravan site. Um, there's Red Fries again in Dunbar, the painting um, of the Dukut. And occasionally we have some really useful cartographic evidence as well, like Geddes Map of St Andrews, which shows uh, Black Fries still standing and Grey Fries um, in those two red circles. So far, um, I've been to visit um, probably about 20 of these fiery sites altogether, and I just want to show you. Um, some things that have struck me straight away. This place is remarkable. This is Loch Ness Carmelite Friary, just outside Abilady. This is in some forestry, and you have um, the stunning remains of the Carmelite Church. Um, you have the, the buttresses, and this mural tomb with a knight's figure um, on the lid, still in place. Um, what interests me most about this site um, is this group of drawings that were done by the Ministry of Works in the 1920s because um, James Richardson has recorded the position of the church in red and then he's drawn where he says the cloister is 
Now, when you go and look, that's all hardly at the ground, and they never actually did any excavation or clearance in that area at all. Um, and I reckon the cloister is actually on that side uh, of the church. Um, maybe I'll be able to tell you more about that in the future. Um, St. Monas, um, you have a fantastic church at St. Monas, just up the hill from it, um, where that graveyard is now, it's supposed to have been a Blackfriars monastery. Um, but it's not obvious. Um, is there a bit of confusion going on here? Um, could we be talking about a different use um, for that church in the medieval period? Maybe that's where we're doing it as well um, for some limited amount of time. Or maybe it's in a completely different place. Um, these are the sort of things that I'd like to try and understand um, by this project. Um, again, go up to Banff. We have two possible locations for the Carmelite Friary in Banff. It's either in the grounds of Duff House, um, where there is a chapel, or it's somewhere off Carmelite Street in, in Banff itself, which you might think is a bit of a giveaway. Um, <laughs> but it's not that simple. Um, Ray Cashel will remember this site only too well. In 1989, um, uh, Ray and one other went up and looked at this rather curious mound sorry, in the grounds of Carmelite House Hotel. Um, known as Penance Mound. Um, we think it's probably some sort of late medieval garden feature, but I mean, could that be connected some way um, to the Carmelite House if that's the area it was in? Um, these are the things that uh, I need to do and uh, we'll work on. Closer to home, let's look at Dundee. Here we have the two friars. We have Grey Friars, the Franciscans, which is in the house, and then we have the location of the Dominicans on the other side of Friars Wide, which runs between Bronzoni and Pasterhead. They have Black Friars located there, right across the road um, from the Great Friars. Now, when I went and visited, I thought, well, I don't quite, see, I don't quite understand that. So, having a look at the Borough Survey, I was interested to see that Pat Denison actually suggests that that fire was here, outside uh, the West Port. Uh, that's the location that I've showed you just now. She says it's more likely to be down here, uh, based on existing documentary evidence. So that's interesting. I mean, if, if that fire really is down there, then I would like to think that it might help. Um, if there are any possible planning applications in that area, that there might be a, a bit of monitoring taking place. Um, so, in summary, from this very quick run-through, um, like I say here, I think one of our main aims has to be to, to facilitate public and community re-engagement with heritage. And I'd like to think that the production of such a document that I'm suggesting um, will help to do that. The importance of producing such a gazetteer is that it allows anyone to use it as a springboard for further work such as local interpretation, education and research. Also, I'd like to hope it will be a useful tool for local authority archaeologists when monitoring planning applications and I think it matches the aims and outcomes of SCARF, the research framework that we've held so much about today. The involvement of these religious houses in the everyday life of the people of medieval Scotland and their fate in the Scottish Reformation don't seem to form part of the current school curriculum. And I think they deserve to be better explained and described. And finally, I was so pleased to see the other day that they've repainted the hill <coughs> of Wells Hill, which is the location that's given for the Carmelite firing. Thank you.